Leia here from LeiaFirstSci.com, and in this video I will show you how to name dye substituted aromatic compounds using the ortho, meta, and para designators. In part 1 of naming aromatics, I show you how to name a compound that has a benzene or phenyl group as a substituent. However, how do you name a compound in which benzene is the parent chain and has more than one substituent? To name this compound, you have two options. You can find your highest priority substituent and give it a number 1, then work your way around the rest of the molecule, giving all subsequent substituents additional numbers. This follows the standard for IUPAC naming. Let's take a look at a quick example. Let's say I have an OH group coming off my benzene ring, and I also have a chlorine. We identify OH to be the highest priority and give it a number 1, then work our way clockwise so that chlorine gets the next lowest number, which is 3. Since an OH on a benzene ring is called a phenol, that will be my parent name, and chlorine off of carbon 3 gives me the prefix 3-chloro. When putting this name together, I get a final name of 3-chlorophenol. The reason I don't include a number for the alcohol is because it is understood to be the highest priority and therefore number 1. The second system for naming disubstituted benzene compounds is to give them special designators which in the name tell you where they show up on the molecule. In order to help you remember these substituents, I'm going to draw my little orgo buddy here. A side note for when you're studying complex topics, if you give yourself mnemonic, you are more likely to remember. And the funnier, the weirder, or the dirtier the mnemonic, the more likely you'll remember what you're studying, but don't worry, I'll keep it clean. This little guy came about when I was teaching a couple of students aromatic naming. We'll have the benzene ring as a face. We'll put an X at the primary position, which will be the hair, and this X can represent any substituent on your molecule. Say we have a substituent on the benzene ring as the primary or highest priority functional group. We have special names to designate the nearby positions. If the primary group is carbon number 1, the second position, or carbon number 2, is called the O, or ortho position. The next carbon away from my initial substituent, or position number 3, is called the M or meta position. And lastly, the group directly opposite my substituent is called the P or para position. We'll give this guy some eyeballs, complete his mouth, and this way you won't forget him when you're studying your aromatic naming and EAS reactions. We'll keep this little guy handy for when we're naming these compounds. Returning to our previous example with the alcohol and chlorine, recognize that alcohol is the highest priority, the next position would be ortho, and the next would be meta, and that means the chlorine is situated at the meta position. To name this molecule, once again we still use the parent name of phenol, but instead of using the number 3 in front of chloro, we simply place an M for meta and call it metachloro. This gives me a final name of M-chlorophenol for metachlorophenol. Don't let the orientation of the molecule trick you. Notice that in this case my OH group does not appear at the top, but as long as the chlorine is two carbons away, it's still considered the meta position. Let's take a look at this example. Recognize that we have an NH2 group coming off of benzene for a parent name of aniline. We have an iodine substituent directly opposite from the NH2, which means it is in the 4 or para position. This gives me the prefix of P-iodo for a para-iodine. And this gives me a final name of para or P-iodo aniline. Here's an interesting benzene compound that we have not yet looked at. When we have two methyl groups coming off of it, it's not a methyl toluene, but instead is called xylene. We can have three isomers of xylene, and this will simply depend on how the two methyl groups are situated with respect to each other. It doesn't matter which methyl group you consider your carbon 1, but instead look at the relationship that they have to each other. In the first example, since the two methyl groups are directly near each other, one will be the primary methyl, the second is in the ortho position, and this gives me orthoxylene, or simply O-xylene. For my second example, I have a carbon in between the two methyl groups, and this means that one is the primary, the second is in the meta position, giving me the name meta or simply M-xylene. And lastly, when the two methyl groups are directly opposite each other, one is the primary, the second is in the para position, and I call this para-xylene or simply P-xylene. Let's look at two more examples. The molecule on the left has a carboxylic acid and an alcohol group. 
Since the carboxylic acid is higher priority, the parent chain in this case will be benzoic acid, which makes the OH group a hydroxy substituent. We'll sneak a peek at our little monster and recognize that one carbon in between the two groups means the OH is located on the meta position as compared to the carboxylic acid. This gives me a final name of meta or simply M-hydroxy benzoic acid. For the molecule on the right, I have both an amine and an alcohol. If NH2 is priority, I have aniline. If OH is priority, I have phenol. However, alcohol takes priority over an amine, and that gives me phenol as my parent chain and amino as my substituent. Since the two groups are located directly opposite each other, the little monster says we have a para substituent, which gives me para or simply p amino phenol. We'll look at this final example before we officially conclude the naming series. We have a benzene ring with an ester and a nitro group coming off of it. Since ester is higher priority, I use that to determine the name of the parent chain. Remember, an ester is named as if it's a carboxylic acid, where instead of the ending oic acid, you use oate. Since the carboxylic acid would be benzoic acid, the name for the parent chain here will be benzoate. We have a methyl substituent coming off the ester, which gives me methyl preceding the entire name, and we have a nitro group on the carbon directly near the ester. Referring to our little monster, we see that the nitro group is on the ortho position, which gives me ortho nitro, or simply O nitro. When putting the name together, the ester substituent is the first thing mentioned, and then the parent, which gives me a final name of methyl ortho nitro benzoate, or simply methyl O nitro benzoate. This officially concludes my 21 video series on naming organic compounds. I would love to hear your feedback and what you thought of this series, so go ahead and post a comment on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash layerforsci. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgo tutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.